2021. I'm just looking in the mirror right here. Right from my, the back of my earlobe down my neck. It's the sternocleidomastoid from my clavicle from my clavicle to the back. I get right here in my neck it and and in my shoulder girdle because Mike told me my shoulder 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 girdle goes from here to my shoulder and from front to back. It is like oh my god, it is like a it is like somebody taking your muscle away because the muscles come in bundles um, in the back of the neck. It's like them lifting it up and just squeezing the nerve and the muscle. It hurts so bad. It just comes out of nowhere. I didn't do anything. I, I used to get, um, I went to a doctor called Dr. Barrett. Um, he was the last, um, Brendan Burns recommended him. Um, and I went to him. He looked more of like a sports fitness. He was like the, not the size of John Cena, but, um, a little bit smaller than John Cena. And he was very, very big into fitness and, and men's hormones. And he had a whole clientele. I don't know who any of them were, but, um, I used to go see him, um, for a local doctor, I think he was in Bohemia, B-O-H-E-M-O-A, I think, whatever. But I used to get cortisone injections in the back of my neck because he said that that would help um, with whatever. I had no idea at that point what it meant. But again, it just, they start and they call, like my mom calls it um, when I ask her for her medical advice, which is... Oh, untrained. Oh God! It just goes. It radiates straight up. Um, she calls it um, Charlie horse, or a crick in the neck. C R I C K, in the N E C K, or a C H A R L I E H O R S E. Those are the slangly terms that Lynn uses. Um, having a protestant grandmother. Uh, from Protestant mother from Ireland. Um, that was, that's my mom's only medical training or advice. Crick in the neck, Charlie horse. Uh, but I've suffered from them. And when I was actively working out, when I met Eric at the world gym in Ronkonkoma, um, I would, I would plank P L A N K. Um, and all of a sudden I would get, it would happen. Um, or I would, I mean like some of the workouts that I was doing, it would just hit me and then I can't, it, there's no stretching it out. I mean like I know if you're in the physical world, like the trainers, they think they know everything. Yeah, not in this instance, kiddos. I'm from a whole nother classification and like I'm from planet different fitness at this point. I'm nuclear tied in um, and with medical leashes and a whole lot of stuff I didn't sign up for. So, um, but I would get this Charlie horse band um, and it would just, it, it just, I don't know how it electrified itself to like tease the muscle and crimp the muscle, but it, I can't, it's, it's like a cycle I can't get out of. Um, and it's not stimulant based or related. It's some type of outside environmental, outside environmental, not an ingestible or not an edible um, interference because it comes out of nowhere. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. It's not patterned. There's no algorithm, algorithm for it. It just happens at these weird intervals that I can explain in the moment, but there, if I document them, there's no rhyme or reason for them that I can tell from just waking up every morning and trying to make it through the day. Um, but I was suffering from them when I had lost all the weight. Um, 
I had gone to see also a doctor some in Smithtown, but he was a different kind of doctor. He was a weight loss doctor. Um, and I went on these protein shakes where I ate absolutely nothing. And the only thing I ingested were these three shakes a day. Um, I lost a lot of weight. It was actually much more enjoyable to not have to cook or think of what I was eating or drinking. Um, but around there, I lost my vocal cords, became uh, polyp. I, they, the humans call them polyps on my vocal cords, but I can't say it. But that's what they called it. But my voice all of a sudden tightened up. My throat tightened. And I lost a portion, because I didn't always sound like this. I used to have a beautiful voice. Now I have like a frog voice. Um, and then my neck started jamming up in tightness, but at weird times and really painful. My son Daniel, um, when he was little and we lived in Ronkonkoma, all within the same time frame, he out of nowhere would get really bad cramps like I get in my neck. He would get them in his leg between his foot and his calf. Um, I know that when I went to nursing school when I was pregnant with Daniel, they said it's a deficiency or it's something, uh, an old wives tale was, um, pe the potassium to calcium ratio is off for, um, however the triggers work within the myelin sheath. Um, so I would always give him a banana and a glass of milk. Um... But for me, um, even with that, I was plagued by this. And it's always on my right side. That one area just would ignite out of nowhere and spark. And I would just like lock up and jam up. And it would just like really hurt without any kind of relaxation. Um, and sometimes, um, not that I, I mean, I'm normally alone. I don't have anybody to touch it. But if I would like ask Ben, my son, to touch it, like if he put pressure on it, it would sometimes travel and tighten up or expand in the um, in the the hurt. Um, so these are like all things that I've experienced within this weather pattern and within this environment in the state of New York um, after the humans went cordless. Um, and their supply change, their supply chain changed along with some kind of, um, I'm sure there's some kind of international law associated with it, but again, nobody's handed out, um, explain to the locals. Like I haven't been explained to what's changed in international law. Like there's no even like a source of where do you even find these changes and what does it mean and how do you protect yourself and so on and so forth. There's been none of that disseminated. Um, I don't know. I don't believe that's called propaganda or campaign. I just, I don't know how humans use these words in their legalese. I, it's very unclear to me. I just know where I've suffered and I'm watching some of the environmental, local, um, and stimuli changes that have happened to integrate them with my personal biological journey uh, while I've, I've been here um, and how it's degraded. Because again, I have four ribosomes I'd be a Golgi apparatus. I packaged four ribosomes. They've got f one copy of the same mitochondrial DNA. All four of them share that one string of truth with their mother, um, who before I take my last breath, I want to make sure that I leave the world a better place than where they were delivered to because I didn't ask for any of this, but neither did they. Um... So that's noteworthy in um, when I was physically fit, when I was able to use the elliptical every day. I was very diaphoretic, by the way. That is a note. I normally do not sweat, uh, S-W-E-A-T. I'm not diaphoretic, naturally. Um, but I was 
so, I believe it's tachycardic is the fast one by heartbeat. I was so tachycardic when I was on the elliptical and like I was zoning in, plus I was high toxicology because of all of the natural toxins in this New York environment between water and food and whatever. So diaphoresis was uh, my body trying to wash out some of the toxins. That's what the humans say in their nutritional and fitness field. So we'll go with that at the moment. Um, but it w must have been a horribly weird sight for poor Eric because he was not nearly as diaphoretic as I, but then again, he's probably not as toxic as what I've been living through. Um, but then, like, on the date that we went on, obviously I was back to my normal self, showered and, like, actually ready for the world, not, like, in trying to lose weight and stay fit mode. So, like, there's the gym, like, I don't want to be, and I would always keep my, like, blinders on, look at the far wall at, his, at a point and just zone in and out. Um, and then just walk in and walk out and, like, hope nobody really noticed that I was even there. But, um, that's really that. Um, let's think about it. And then... Yeah, but on the most part, I'm not diaphoretic, like, naturally. Like, there's no diaphoresis that happens unless you start to become tachycardic. Um, at least in my, um, whatever. Um, although Lynn at some point suffered from heat flashes, but that was, like, a sudden onset of basal body temperature increase. Um... But again, it's been so, like, there's the regulation of body to weather, body to environment, body, electrolyte to electrode, electron, electrode, or electnode, and then the electricity piece, the electricity being it should stay outside of my body. My body should not become a conduit that takes on excess electricity uncontrolled that then tries to stir up biological problems and interfere with the anatomical clock. But I feel like that's what's been going on in this local area. But again, there's no... That, that level of confession 